A good afternoon and a warm welcome to you all who have tuned in here live at Formula Sim Racing World Championship, the main event this weekend. Next to me is Felix van Delft and uh, Dave Paling, obviously, and we have landed down in Australia for what should have been the uh, uh, primary round, the, the first round of this season. However, things went a little bit messy and we plan to do it right here. Uh, never, uh, nevertheless, the uh, tension isn't uh, isn't uh, cooling down down so much but the weather might uh, uh, shift of has, has shifted a little bit since the start of this year hasn't it Felix yes definitely I mean we've already seen a couple of rain races in this in the in the season and it has rained already in the practice session today here in Australia in Melbourne let's take a look at the track uh, information though we of course are driving at the beautiful uh, Melbourne Grand Prix circuit it is, well, quite obviously uh, laid in the beautiful city of Melbourne. And there is quite a bit of chance of rain. And it's even increasing during the uh, qualifying and race session. So about a 40% chance of rain. And the temperature is about 11 to 12 degrees. Past the winners here, 2016, Jim Parisis was uh, on a charge last year. And the year before that, Daniel Kiss. And of course, our lovely Dutch friend Bono has won in 2014. I'm going to be racing here for 58 laps. So it's a, it's a long race for these guys. A lot of uh, yeah. concentration needed. But uh, let's see how they cope. And the uh, interesting fact as well, of course, uh, in Australia, it's getting winter right now. So uh, that might be uh, the reason why it's 11 degrees now. Very, very cold indeed. And as you might see on the track, there is a big flat spot of a sorry, black spot and a dry line visible. And um, although we have seen in, in, in past uh, wet races that the dry line is, is extensively getting bigger, even though the drivers don't, you know, drive on it even i mean uh, the drying up of the track is is, is even the uh, is, is more evened out but um if you touch that why uh, uh, if you go into the wet with these uh, uh, slick tires which all of these guys are using uh, you still find yourself into the gravel track and it's interesting to see how that will uh, uh, cope during the race because seriously if you're going to start in the front you're, you're going to need soft uh, uh, um, uh, slick tires yeah. But if you start off the racing line, you know, it's 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 impossible to drive with dry tires. So it's I'm gonna gonna hold my hand uh, off, hold my heart uh, out for these guys. Well, having said that, I mean it would make sense for in the warm up session for anybody that is on that side of the grid to do some runs down that side of the grid to try and dry it up a little bit even perhaps find their grid slot and try yeah. a couple of practice starts to see how it is anyway the qualifying session so far martin gosby leading the way on a, a 124.924 which i think is about a second off the pace of what we could potentially see on a completely dry track another yeah. thing to do with the weather as well is that um the time of day in australia we're using the live weather which means it's the exact sort of weather conditions for the time that it is in australia right now as well and interesting to see that uh, these guys uh, including michi hoyer are uh, doing effectively two stints in one they do two fast laps and uh, so that's going to be three runs in that aspect and uh, gosby is also continuing on so yeah, that's different uh, approach of strategy there then Martin Stefanko doing uh, two stints. Well, Patel's just started a flying lap, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets nice. on with him uh, topping the driver's standings at the moment. That dry line definitely getting a bit wider, as you said, Chris, but the drivers are going to have to be ever so careful for any damp patches out there because, as you've also said, one tiny little mistake, and there's walls here to, to catch any drivers that aren't concentrating too much or catch any drivers that suffer from commentators' curses. Isn't yeah. that right, Felix? Like Maldonado, yeah. right on the spot where Patel, Patel used to drive now. Like a few years ago, been in it in the in the last lap. But uh, yeah, Mohammed Patel is not such a driver. It's always a pleasure to watch him, and uh, it's interesting to see where he will uh, line himself up. Though he waited uh, almost eight minutes before uh, going out on track. It's, it's uh, the instinct of a fox. Yes. Yeah, maybe uh, letting the other drivers do the dirty work for him. Of course. Yeah. You wanna you wanna sweep the track dry? Be my guest. You know. Exactly. So at the moment I'm looking at Gosby, he's uh, going for quite a big improvement. First sector purple, second sector purple. 
Now, last sector very aggressive over the curbs in the fast chicane. There can, there can be gained a lot of time in this last sector. Also, of it's course, can, can be lost a lot of time. But let's see what he can do. Looks all reasonably clean. Just keeps it uh, in between the uh, dry lines, so to say. Now, We're really on the limit. Yeah, definitely. Coming to the line, right behind him, you see uh, the Invictus driver of, I think, uh, Daniel Brewer. And what a lap, 124.5, almost half a second quicker than Michioi. But of course, the track is drying up every second. Patel's just gone purple sector one. He went on for a second flying lap, as Chris mentioned, some of the drivers are doing. And it does kind of make sense in these conditions. Give your tyres that extra lap to get up to temperature. Give yourself a lap to see where the grip is. And that second flying lap can then become uh, absolutely vital. But yeah, Patel, uh, purple sector one, looking good at the moment. Yeah, yeah really tidy fun. around here. Purple sector two. Uh, so if you can uh, have a nice final four corners here, he could be on for taking pole position. And we know that he's capable of winning races. We know he's capable of getting pole positions as well. He had a little bit of understeer through this corner on his previous lap, but no such problems this time around. Only one corner to go now. He's had the experience of one lap already. And let's see how he gets on nicely through the final corner there. And uh, I think he's going to be taking pole position with this lap. Yeah, a 24.3. Wow, nice. Yeah, and he always makes it look so easy because the car is glued on the road when when you look at it from the outside. But then, you know, it's 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 obviously not. But then again, he makes it look so easy. Martin uh, Gosby is, is is visibly fighting the car a little bit more than Patel is. Um, however, I do reckon, even though we haven't seen Gosby uh, in quite some time, quite some years, and quite some races indeed, uh, both are of the same ca uh, capabilities and. Um, yeah, it's going to be epic to see uh, who's going to take Paul. Or will it maybe be Michi Hoyer on P3? He is on uh, a flyer. He is? Yes, he is. With his teammate right behind him, Martin Stefanko. Uh, both occupying P3, P4. That might change this time around. Well, well definitely because Eros Mashuri just uh, uh, took P3 away from them. Stefanko's on a better lap, but I think he's setting up for another flying lap now. Could be wrong. No, he's yeah. going for another yeah. one. And you were right, Martin Stavanko pushing Mashuri back to P4, taking P3, and both are uh, intending on yet another flying lap. So it's the uh, majority of drivers that choose to do one out lap, two fast laps, and then obviously the in lap. So three runs. Yep, Stavanko was very twitchy through turn one and two, and he's actually abandoned the lap in the car park. Yep. Making Daniel Ricciardo proud. Oh, Michi Hoy made a mistake as well in turn, what is it, turn 7, 8, I believe. Let's take a quick replay of, uh, of what happened there. At least he's exploiting the limits. Michi Hoyer doing everything in his grasp to get pole position here. Uh, yeah, not just over the limit. Just a little bit over the limit. Unlucky Michi. But do we rather see a, a driver trying to... You know, we, we had, um, what was the guy, uh, his name of um, Max Chilton. He was never spectacular. He always finished races, but he was never spectacular on anything. You, you rather see a guy crash once in a while, and then, you know, you can see he's pushing it to the max, right? So. Well, there have been a few team bosses in the past that have said, you know what, if my uh, rookie driver doesn't crash the car at least once, he isn't pushing hard enough. Exactly. <laughs> it must be have been Eddie Jordan. I mean, that's, that that's sounds like a Brit. Yeah, that's the excuse I'll go with for why I crashed earlier. Yeah, and just <laughs> Just to update people, there are a couple of penalties for drivers out on the grid today. Fran Lopez, uh, Jim Parisis, John Eric Saxon have all got back of the grid penalties for indiscretions at the previous race. George Manasakis, a five-place grid penalty, so there may be a change for him. Uh, but Daniel Brewer, uh, he's winding up to start a flying lap. And I talked a little bit last time out about drivers and the correct pronunciation of uh, names. And, and Daniel Brewer gave me his as well. He said it's... Air, Ton, Sen, Na, which I don't quite believe. Uh, so from now on, I'm going to call him uh, Daniel Brewer, just for the sake of it. I'm going to call him Harry Potter this race if, he, uh, if he's continuing on the death fashion. Come on. <laughs> Senna. <laughs> uh, I know, I know. Anyway, let's see how he gets uh, on Ooh, through Mohammed, sector one. Mohamed Patel just being completely stationary on the track, but yeah. he was instantly pressing escape as well. Becker now going to P2. 
I mean, Good Cameron point. Roger and, 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 and the other Dutch guy, Gerla van Free, the Vries, are heavily breathing right now and instantly going off for yet another flyer. So will we see a pole position of Becker here? Could be interesting. Mado Brewer is, or Brewer is, oh, oh, two no. attempts on his lap will carry on. Not for Becker. And it's gone. He's into the wall in, uh, in turn four, so he's going to have to try again. He's got about uh, well, one try left, so five minutes and one try. Should be able to uh, get that in. Uh. Yeah, he can do one more run of two, two laps indeed, so... Well, with all the bad weather, usually, uh, you know, raining in, in, in Great Britain all the time, it's no, uh, no surprise that the Brit is currently leading. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. And I'm Dan sure we're going to see some fireworks yet. Uh, oh, yeah, not Daniel Brewer does improve on his time, puts himself fourth place. So, Cosby now, continuing on. Nice first corner there for him. It's always the thing in in Australia. If you if you if you have a sloppy turn one, you're you're like okay, here you go for the you know re remainder of the lap. But it's it's such a corner that you want to nail perfectly. But then again, you know it it, it can be tricky. But no, oh, yeah. not really a trick. So the whole, the whole circuit, track, yeah. circuit in general, I think, is very tricky. And there we go. Ooh, Cosby is gone. See, is doing a Michi Hoyer right there. Well, you're both right. I mean, turn one is is crucial. If you mess up turn one, that's it. Your whole lap is gone unless your previous yeah. laps have been just as bad. Um, but as Felix said, yeah, every corner has a knock-on effect to, to the next corner. I mean, for example, Silverstone. You make a little mistake in turn one at Silverstone, it's all right. You've got a bit of room and a bit of time to, to cope with it in the rest of the lap to make yeah. it up. But Worst thing is, is Suzuka. If you make yeah. one mistake in the S's, you know, yeah. all the other S's are ruined. Oh, yeah. I mean, I've always said, if you make a mistake at turn three at Suzuka, that's the entry of the S's, you're going off track at turn seven. Uh, just like I know, Simoncic, he's uh, starting a flying lap, and he was very cautious on his outlap by the looks of it, so whether he's going to go for two flying laps or not, I don't know, but I don't think he'll have the time, will he? Uh, Who did you say? Simoncic or Kiss? Simoncic will have the time for Yeah, he will have the time for two flying laps if he wants them. Yeah, uh, well, if this is a flyer, then indeed he can, but... Gonna be close. Nine Let's out of twelve for him. Well, he's up on his uh, previous best, but it's not up enough for him. Mohamed Patel looking comfortable uh, at in uh, provisional pole position at the moment. I think that go speed is, isn't really set up for the for the first sector. They're the top speed guys, right? So if he's gonna make any difference, it should be oh. translated here. Patel 24-0 has just popped in. That'll have got everybody's attention. How's Journey doing, Dave? He's up on his uh, Sector 2, two times up on his previous best. He's looking only at about 24-6, though, overall. So, yeah. yeah, may get to third, fourth place. He needs a fantastic final sector, though. Uh, whether it's going to come or not, don't know. Is he going to go for a second flying lap? I wouldn't be surprised if he does. He's into the final corner now, and that corner looked more like setting himself up for the next flying lap. I think it'll still be an improvement. Yeah, three tenths up, goes second place, but he's four tenths off Patel at the moment, and he is going on for a second flying lap. Oh, making a breaking time for him, although P2 is always nice to have. Uh, also being the first guy to cross ten, uh, the 10 lap mark, so with one and a half minutes to go, we actually have 18 drivers on track. Yep, only the two drivers that cannot uh, set a lap because of a penalty are in the pits at the moment, so busy track. But it'd be difficult for traffic as well, uh, maybe still a fairly compact track yeah. well. and Mohammed Patel had to uh, let a Netrex driver go past and you see instantly how cautious he is uh, because he has to go onto the wet yeah. uh, with his uh, red soft compound looking tires but yeah Simmons it's now sector 2 come on Dave show us potato salad Tenth improvement, but he's still three tenths off. But he's going to get a bit of slipstream for the car ahead of him as they pull out onto the damp patch. Yeah, but yeah I, I think Patel might be safe though. And Patel's going to have a try after uh, Simonches as well. Of course, also one of the last uh, guys that's going to be able to set a lap. Come on, Journey. Pedal to the metal. Here we go. Come Plus, on. There should be. Okay. Oh. 
not really. Looking at the timing screen, there's a hell of a lot of people doing very close uh, sector time, sector one, sector twos, as they're all heading towards the final sector. So we could get some uh, quite a few changes in this uh, last few moments. Yeah. yeah, indeed. George Manusakis was the last guy to make uh, to to make a run, but he quit at the lap. So it's Patel. Kiss going. Gosby is up. His purple sector two is two tenths up on his previous best. This could put him second place. Disley P6. Yep. Nice job, Blair. Atta boy. So Gosby is gonna be the one to watch now. Indeed, he is. Lost the corner. Stefanko right uh, ahead of him, though. Stefanko. Crossing start finish line about now. Did not do it. Did Gosby do it? P4 goes to P2. So beats the other guys except Mohamed Patel, who has wrecked his car beyond reason. Daniel Brewer, P5. Can he improve still? The young Brit aiming for a better position, not being able to do it. P5 is, however, a great achievement for him. Francis and that means Stoney. we have Mohamed Patel in pole position. We do. Francesconi got himself up to fifth place on his last flying lap. Oh, fair, nice. Only the Alessandro, and he puts himself in P13. So indeed, Mohamed Patel on that pole position. Great job. Gosby got ever so close, but just not enough. Indeed. So Blair Disley, a top 10 performance for him. Uh, I, I can't remember a day where he uh, he qualified top 10, to be honest. I don't know. He had some good races uh, last season, I believe, as yeah. well. But... And Risto Capet, P9. Eros Mashuli ending the top 10 there on P10. But I do have to say um, that it's a little bit disappointed uh, of disappointing in terms of a result for Michi Hoyer, I do think. And Michele Di Alessandro should be a top 10 yeah. regular yeah, customer as well. Kish, I think as well. Yeah, Camille Diswa was, was really fast last year as well. But Michi Hoyer, yeah, last um, of two weeks ago, he qualified P2, didn't he? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Pole Better position, with Stefanko. Yeah. Uh... yeah. And now well, P14. Well, guys, do you think that potentially the coming in to do the practice session before qualifying with it being a wet server, drying it up, it's got into a few of the drivers' minds of, do I change the setup? Is it going to rain again? And instead of just focusing, right, let's just dry the track up, ignore the setup. I know it's good. We'll get it dry for qualifying and go for it. Have they gone into their own minds a little bit, perhaps? Where And this is maybe where the experience in WC of Patel, uh, Simoncic, and even Gosby from uh, previously, where that uh, experience and composure may have just helped them a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, of course, changing conditions, so it's difficult for everyone. But, yeah, maybe... The Patel just, of course, he's, he's, he has shown in the previous uh, wet rounds that he's oh, one of the best, uh, least changing conditions or wet drivers out uh, out here. Yeah, I mean, I would say as well that, I mean, the track is definitely at its best at the moment. Um, uh, I know that uh, in, I think it was in Ace, we saw a faster time in qualifying. So, yeah, the track conditions not optimal for slick tyres. So, uh, obviously, that will make things a little bit more difficult as well. Definitely. Right, so um, we are going to go for a quick advertisement break. We will be back with you in about five minutes' time. And then we will take you through the driver and constructor's standings and maybe talk a bit, bit about strategy and then get started for this race. So grab a cup of coffee, maybe uh, uh, a slice of uh, uh, or cookie or something, I don't know. But uh, we will be right back with you. Hey man, I got that new TMX Thrustmaster wheel. It's going down. <laughs> Xbox One? Yeah. I can't wait to play when I get home. Yo, let me play. Uh, yeah. I'll so play first. Yeah. You know, I'll race before. So I have a hand.
And welcome back here at Formula Sim Racing. Hope you enjoyed those advertisements. Um, we certainly enjoyed warm up for the time being. And it's a nice fact that only one and a half minutes are left on the clock to, uh, to be counted down until we go towards the formation lap and the start of this race. The moment we have all been waiting for this entire weekend and uh, all our lives, obviously. But um, 
it's going to be an epic, thrilling turn one. Yeah, uh, it's always... And after that, it's, it's over. You know, yep. all, all DNFs. <laughs> yeah, well, actually in Pro and Ace today, uh, turn one went really smoothly. So I was uh, I was very surprised by that. So maybe these uh, World Championship drivers can do even better than them. But what was the mess you told me about then? Because I haven't. Oh well, in general, yeah. in the race in pro, it's always a bit uh, chaotic, oh, yeah. of course. Yeah, but they're a bit in messy. In turn yeah. one, in turn one, and turn two, and it went all all clean. Yeah, I mean, I when I uh, tried to broadcast in ace, I was amazed at how really good the ace drivers were on that opening lap. I will quickly mention as well. Uh, I just want to say. Uh, I have tried giving uh, FSR a go at broadcasting, and it's not easy. So, <laughs> Felix, uh, yeah. massive uh, well done to yourself on uh, being able to do it as well as you do. And for anyone that looks at it and thinks, oh, that's easy, no, it's just Felix. He's good at it. Um, some I've information for you as well. Sorry, uh, there have been a lot of drivers testing starts on the dirty side of the grid. Mm -hmm. I am. Well, they should be, if they have brains. And most of them do in WC. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Some of them can't count to 12. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't yeah, know if you were there for that, Chris, time, but right? yeah, we did have that once. Anyway, let's take a quick look at the driver standings. We're almost out of time, so just take a quick look at the drivers, the teams. Uh, well, don't have time for that, but uh, they will uh, we'll find out. And then suddenly afterwards. Player 3 has entered the game, <laughs> named Jim Parises. Yeah, well, Hello, please. Jim. Good morning to you. So let's let's take a quick look. Right, so Mohamed Patel is leading the championship, of course, still after, uh, well, two very dominant rounds, uh, three uh, even, and uh, of course last round had to concede the win to Journey Simoncic, who is in second. Martin Gosby doing a great job on his, uh, well, re-entry into world championship in third. Fourth, Lars Brookman still. Good job from the a new driver in uh, Formula Sim Racing. Daniel Kish in fifth. Marius Stefanko 6th, Michele de Alessandro in 7th. Then Sander Callas, he was a reserve driver, so he will drop down further down the field, most likely in 8th. Then Michi Hoya and Florian Becker sharing that ninth position with 14 points both. Right, um, let's take a quick look then at the starting grid. So basically the uh, even numbers are on the wet. Yeah, so... Patel starting on pole position, Martin Gosby second, Journey Simoncic right after Patel of course on the dry side of the track, Florian Becker in fourth, Michael Francesconi fifth, Daniel Brewer in sixth, then Blair Disley, well done for him in seventh, Martin Stefanko, I think further down than I would have wanted in eighth, Risto Kappert in ninth, tenth Eros Marsuli, and then let's see, in eleventh it is Daniel Kish, twelfth Michele D'Alessandro, and thirteenth Michi Hoyer. 14th, Giordano Valeriano. Uh, James Sadler in 15th. George Manusakis in 16th. Lars Brookman again quite far down the grid in 17th. Then 18th, Camille Lezwa. Uh, or Wiswa, as I should uh, say. Then 19th, John Eric Saxon. And then Fran Lopez. And uh, Jim Paris is, I think, starting from the pit lane as well. 19th. Paris is 19th, Saxon 20th, and Fran Lopez 21st. Yeah, they're all starting from the pits, right? So that's yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, fair enough. Well, they're all uh, they're all and, back and on the grid. That's it, for it sure. basically seems entirely dry, except for, I I think yeah. No, well, so turn three it's not really doable in the braking zone, the wet part. But you know, in a few laps time it will be. So I think it's just you know keep your eyes open in in the pre uh, in the first couple of laps, especially the first couple of laps. Not that you can uh, take a. Take a take a, take a break or anything uh, after lap ten, but yeah, it's going to be a tricky tricky one uh, this uh, first couple of laps because the the wet is going to play a part for at least one driver. Yeah, for sure. I mean, let's hope it will not cattle into a chain reaction or anything, but yeah. it's going to be a tricky condition. Yeah. So no surprises so to see the entire grid onto the uh, onto the soft compound tires or at least the uh, slick compound tires. But uh, yeah, there were some questions, there were some debates. Talking about tires, I just want to quickly touch on strategy. What, what, what do you, Dave, what do you think? Uh... Well, I'm thinking two-stop would be doable around here. A one-stop 
Maybe, depending on how people are with their tyres, but in these conditions I don't think it's going to work. Um, I've had a quick look at the, the guys outside the top 10 and everyone's on prime tyre, except for Jim Parisis who's on option. So yeah, I'm thinking two stop, uh, option prime prime should be comfortable, um, they could go option prime option. Um, if they wanted to try a one stop, they've got to do at least 20 laps on the options and then they're looking at 33 on the primes. I mean, Felix, do you think that's doable? On the race winner from yesterday, Felix, what do you think? Uh, I wasn't the race winner. That, no, that's no, no, no. Oh, yeah, in the, in the rib cage. Second that place. Two weeks ago then, sorry. Well, good. Yeah. I'll send him a message, Sarah. I'll find well, you're out winning races now with two hands down, so, you know. Uh, well, I think one, one to stop it to might stop. be possible, but I don't think it's going to be like a winning strategy. Maybe for someone uh, who's further down the field than he would have liked, that he can yeah. gain positions by doing that. But I don't think that Patel is going to win a race by doing a one stop. Well, all the drivers have locked into their respective spots and the lights are coming out to get extinguished. And here they come. Five lights are on and off, and we are racing here. Martin Gosby, great start from him. Patel instantly going defensive. Can he pull his cart alongside? He will not. Patel taking the lead into the first corner, but no difficulties for the guys on the wet. Now everyone makes it unscathed through turn one. Going further down the field, Michi Hoyer and Martin Stefanko battling on P11. And it seems that everyone has made a solid, steady, safe start, gentlemen. It seems so bit of contact here at turn three yeah, some thing. wing end plates maybe some full front wings getting Hoyer side damaged by side here. with kiss oh your side by side contact between the those two oh my god I'll take it away guys i think both acr drivers got a, pr uh, a little bit held up in uh, turn three there it was almost six wide at one point uh, definitely using the car park as a car park um, but yeah the acr drivers got to be very very careful there because it's absolutely well it's crazily busy down that lower order and Michi Hoyer turning in on Daniel Kiss there in turn 4 or 5. Can't really blame him. There, there was so much wet, but it's, yeah. A little bit of shunting here uh, going down in the first lap so far, but no DNFs. Nope. Up at the front, thing. up at the front, Patel, he's only got half a second gap on Gosby. Gosby looking quite comfortable on no the Oh, contact lap. between Francesconi. No, Valeriano. Valeriano and Manusakis both into the wall. Uh, yeah, both into the wall. So waiting for the replay. Yeah, um, yeah, and Valeriano is like, "Oops, I did it again." Let's t let's take a look uh, myself. So uh, here we go. Basically, blocked uh, blocked, you know, the car off. On board with Valeriano. Yeah, he went to the left. He steered a little bit to the left, but there was the, his car. There, there was ah. Manusakis. Yeah. Just let know Fran Lopez having a look on John Eric Saxon down for 16th, 17th, but not quite able to get the move done. Now Valeriano seriously has to scratch behind his ears now because this is not the first time this season uh, that stuff like this is happening in the opening laps for him. You know, once or twice it's going to be debatable in, in an entire season, but three times in a row. Who Becker spins almost slides round keeps the fourth position but daniel brewer almost taking advantage of that uh early slip up certainly not gonna gonna do any favors for his tires though but so becker is already having to throw uh the, the towel into the ring compared to the pace of uh, the rest of the tree instantly we see a gap coming there and brewer is on edge right now yeah Brewer, of course, driving for the new Invictus team, will be hungry for some points, I think. Definitely, they're, they're hungry for points. And they got a good driver in Brewer, a driver who has uh, gone up through the field over the past couple of years and has shown uh, tremendous capabilities in, in, in learning aspects. Uh, didn't really turn so much heads, but he, he's, he's really consistent and he's getting faster along the way. And well, uh, he's showing it. I worked a lot with uh, Daniel Brewer last season and uh, I mean he was uh, he's very knowledgeable, uh, very good with setups and strategy, he knows exactly what he's doing, I think uh, he's used his time in FSR very very well and, and that can only be a good thing for the Invictus team. Uh, but I was just going to mention guys, obviously over the course of this weekend this has been a track that's shown to be difficult to overtake around and I think it's going to be a similar story here for the WC drivers but with these difficult track conditions errors could be 
more present, giving us more opportunity of attacks. Well, I'm going to let you guys into a little secret. I don't know if it's a secret, but it's my reality. So I think if I'm taking half a lap of a look uh, on board with Martin Gosby, that Gosby is actually holding back a little bit. He knows he can't get past, like like you said, David, it's tricky. You, you have an opportunity, but you, you seriously have to be lined up. Gosby knows that he can't just charge towards the back of Patel and get a move in. So I have the feeling that he's slotting in respectively on his uh, pace and maybe tries to do something in pit stops later on because it seems that he's not driving on the limit so much so he has some some remaining energy or some remainder uh, left in his uh, well in his tank in so his to tank, say. he's yeah, not on the limit definitely i'd agree with you and the thing is i mean around this Bells particular are so calm all, yeah, all time yeah. always and all of those aspects are going to help towards preserving the tyres. You'd only hope that he's got enough fuel to take his uh, tyres as long as he would hope to do so. Yeah. You'd think he should have done. But yeah, I mean, this is a track where he's in a position where if he just goes gunning at Patel now, it's probably mm. not going to pay off for him. Uh oh, if he wait, sorry, on, distracted. Valeriano rejoining the track. Here, and Becker. He, he has blue flags now. He has to let Becker go. Valeriano, come on, chop, chop. Yep, he is uh, getting out of the way nicely at the moment. He yeah, on good. the grass. So, uh, I have to get back on my words though, because the gap between Becker and Brewer is instantly growing again. I thought Becker had difficulties uh, in, in, in these circumstances. However, he seems to have only made a temporary slip up and he is increasing his space dramatically. And at this rate, he is catching the, the guys in front yet again. Yeah, same now goes for I mean, look at him. He's already uh, almost in the tr in the yeah. transmission of uh, uh, Martin Gosby at the moment. Yeah, he's in a good spot uh, uh, for the time being. And Valeriano ooh, in the wall. He is in the wall yet again. Yep, you can see it right there. New fastest lap, Florian Becker, 26.470, almost uh, two tenths quicker. Then Patel and Gosby, who actually set the exact same lap time. Well, I mean, obviously for, for Gosby and Simicic, they are having to, to deal with dirty air. And uh, for Becker, he hasn't got that problem. But as soon as he catches up to the leading three, uh, that will become a factor. Um, but his tyres will be uh, preferring uh, having a bit of clean air ahead of him at the moment. So Valeriano has been lapped by everyone and he is now completely one lap down over everyone. So it's going to be well, a fun 55 laps. You mentioned a moment ago, guys, that Simincic was all over the back of Gosby or catching up to the back of Gosby. He just nearly hit the back of him into turn nine. He is... He's really applying some pressure. I think for Simicic, it's a different situation than it is for Gosby. Gosby doesn't really need to risk anything, whereas Simicic, his fight is with the race leader in the driver's standing. So he doesn't need a car between them unless Simicic is ahead. Then he wants a car yeah. between them. Uh, fair point there. I do think that uh, Gosby is a little bit, I uh, won't say the wiser one, but the calmer one of the two. And Simicic is a little bit more... You know, I, I'm seeing a gap, I'm, I'm just going to go for it and see what happens, you know. Cosby is a little bit more precise and, you know, calculative, like they used to be at Precision Motorsport. But, uh, yeah, he has to step up the pace a little bit, otherwise he's going to have to drive defensive lines, which will favor, uh, favor Patel. If the, these guys are squabbling uh, uh, on, on P2, it's going to gonna be a, a huge favor for, for Mohammed. Yeah, but at this rate, we're going to have a four-way battle because uh, player four is entering the game. And fortunately for Martin, it's his teammate. Well, interestingly as well, from P7 down, we've got a, a six, nearly seven car uh, sort of battle going on there as well. Uh, with Risto Capit trying to attack uh, Mashi Yuli. Yeah. Um, but it's a situation where... Mm, or is anything going to happen? It may, as has been the case in WC for a lot of this season, the first round of pit stops are going to kick everything off. Although Risto Capit, he's got a great run here. He's not going to try it, is he, into turn 11 and 12? No, he thinks better of it. If he'd have gone for it there, I think it would have ended badly. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> and indeed, like you said, a complete train is forming. And I can't help the fact of thinking... Brugman, Brugman spins into the barrier uh, through the fast left-right chicane. He's lost his front wing, rear wing still attached. And he was just catching on to that uh, train of cars from 7th downwards. Yeah. That is sad. This car is badly damaged. Let's take a look at that replay. 
Right, so Brookman is coming to the 11-12 chicane. Did he just take too much curb on the right hand side. Ah, yeah, on the left. Too much curb on the AstroTurf. It's wet there and then just spins oh, into the, the wall. Fuck, see it? Something is going down on the main straight. Sadler uh, is flying off the stage. What's happening? What the hell? F on board with Fran Lopez in the replay. Fran Lopez. Right, here we go. 30 seconds. Oh, that's a lag. It's lag. So Fran Lopez is coming on the main straight. Holy shit. What happened? Oh, indeed. Whoa, lag from the car in front. Uh, I think. I had that with Felipe Giro once. Well, racing incident, ah. they said. So <laughs> it's going to be a racing incident here. Holy moly. So Fran. Oh my god, who has that car in front then? Was it John uh, Eric Saxon think with his lag? One of the uh, the the Born to Win cars. I, I think it was Saxon. Yeah, I think so too. So he he might yeah, it was Saxon. So like like we've all seen, I hope. I mean he just got inside due to the lag. And that made friend of uh, yeah, friend Lopez spin. Nothing he can do. And Sadler on that stage. He literally went airborne. Yep. Well, I think Sadler flew so far, he's already in the medical center. Oh, I saw the Sadler. Instantly reminded me of Monger there. No offense, but there was like no way he could escape him. He was like, the, the car in... Uh, the, oh man, words are <laughs> escaping too fast for my head to, uh, to pronounce them rightly, but horrible scenario we're seeing here oh yeah three I mean, races effectively ended by a spike of lag and, and the, the guy who, who had the spike of lag is still driving around fine no biggie yeah i wouldn't be too keen on other things as well i mean every now and again a driver will have a crash that just shocks them it's one of those it's an instant bang it's all over and i think that may have been the case for uh, a couple of the drivers there um but yeah i mean connections important i mean sometimes yeah lag spikes can just randomly happen but um uh, yeah. this, stuff ha this, this stuff happens once watch, a year. Watch Stefanko though. Stefanko is really closing in on the Alessandro at the moment. Yeah, well, so has, has the quicker tire. Yeah, who has gotten damage as well is, is the question. It's uh, anyone's race now. Stefanko now getting closer. That's ah, too far off now for now. But the, 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 the track is completely dry now, isn't it? Well, not completely, but it's definitely drying up uh, fairly quickly. There's yeah, still some uh, wet parts. Oh yeah, where yeah, on parts not enough to be really cautious on the braking. Or yeah. No, I think mainly it's just uh, making sure you don't do anything uh, weird, like going yeah. really far offline. When yeah, you're, you're the driver expert now here, Felix. I mean, <laughs> get used to it because you're you're our our bono, so to speak. <laughs> so Stefanko now really go. Ooh, you see the dirty air, like twitching his steering wheel again. It's not gonna do his exit speed a lot of favors. You can dive in the in underneath there, but caps just too wide and if you're gonna dive in Italian you better do it good because otherwise you have a big problem Gee. And you should be I mean the same thing uh, with uh, w what Vettel is doing as well sometimes you just have to steer in if you're too nice on the track you're not here to uh, you know to, to leave too much space for the guy just one car length and sometimes not even one car length because the corner isn't you know but uh, yeah Stefanko is you know, it's just a matter of time before he gets past Michele, and uh, he will certainly be unhappy because he's on the quicker compound tire. And if he wants to make this stint last, he will have to do it quick. But he it seems he's too far off here as well. Just to update you guys, I don't know if something's happened to Simicic over the course of the last few laps. Where he's dropped off the back of the lead in two, and it's either he's had a bit of a problem somewhere, or he's decided, you know what, I'm going to back off a little bit, get myself some clean air, look after my Oops, tyres for a few laps. And I saw some order switching. No, sorry. Thought something happened with my Shuli and Capet, oh, but nothing happened. No, nothing there. And Stefanko again, too far back to try anything on the Alessandro. Hoyer also still stuck in uh, P13, but he is on the medium compound tire though. Jim Parisis is about to attack Camille Wieswer into turn one, option tire versus prime, and he is going up along the inside. Oh. There may have been a bit of contact between the two of them, Wieswer's off, and uh, Parisis up to 15th. No, I missed that, so I'll take a quick replay. Alright, so indeed, Jim Parisis. 
going on the inside here, going into turn one. I mean, if your name is Lisa and you're not going to defend that corner, why steer in? You know, at the moment he's alongside. I mean, but yeah. Then again, his choice, but he's losing extensively amounts of time here. Stefanko now getting really frustrated behind the beautiful Italian flag rear wing uh, of Valeria, of, uh, sorry, Valeriano from, um, from Michele di Alessandro. But it's just too far back. Is it the dirty air that comes uh, too much in play, guys? Yeah, mostly. Uh, also, prime tires can overheat uh, on this track uh, quite a bit, especially if you're in the dirty air. Or Primes or options? The, 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 the options, sorry. The red okay. wall tires can overheat quite quickly and the primes stay reasonably consistent. Maybe Stefanko, if he gets a good exit out of turn no. 1 and 2, can do something in the braking zone. He is, as we call it in Holland, the lul. <laughs> yeah. But I think uh, the, uh, the Alessandro also gets a bit of slipstream from uh, Daniel Kish in front. Yeah, but he's in a really tight situation. The only thing Martin can do now is actually, you know, he's he's gonna stop a little bit earlier than the, the prime tires, obviously. But, um, yeah, he has to now, because that's the way, in a strategic way, he can get past these guys without having to make a pass work on track. Just do it in terms of uh, pit stops. And in terms of pit stops, Martin Gosby, he could do great by uh, by, by, by undercutting uh, Mohamed Patel. He could he try and overcut. Overcut. He'd have to go for the overcut. Um, from what yeah. I've seen in Ace and, and in Pro, undercuts just have not worked. There's too much fuel going in the car, and the uh, tire's too cold. And yeah, it's so okay. much more beneficial to go for the overcut. The problem and is how much how time far for a pit stop, including entry and exit? About, About 24, 23, 24. 24. Yeah, 23, 24. Okay. So if Mohammed Patel pits now, he's gonna get right in front of John Eric Saxon with a five-second gap between him and Hoyer. Yeah, uh, it's gonna be interesting. We we've all seen what happened in the real race in Australia, you know. So uh, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Well, the key for any of the front runners is gonna be Daniel Kish. He's on prime tires, and he's the leading prime tire runner. If uh, race views uh, show the right data, um, so yeah, he's the one that they need they need to be coming out ahead of. Because if they yeah. come out behind him, they're going to be stuck behind him potentially for 10 laps. Because yes, they're going to have fresh tyres, but they're going to have more fuel. So they're going to be slower. So yeah, they've got to make sure and their engineers have got to be fully aware and make sure that they are, they come out ahead and there's a gap for them. Yeah. So Cameron, Roger is the race engineer of Gosby, it seems. And Becker. That could be uh, right, yeah. All right. Well... We have 16 cars yet uh, to watch. They just have two cars to watch, effectively. But uh, yeah, they, they, they have to be up to date as well. Um, do you use uh, any of you guys use an engineer? Uh, yeah, I do. Personally, I don't at the moment um, because I can't get team speed to work through while I'm uh, using the wheel uh, with a push the button to work on the wheel for some reason. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, so yeah, I could have an engineer talking to me, but I won't be able to talk back. So I figured, uh, no, nah, I'll leave it. Stefanko looking for a gap at uh, Michele D'Alessandro, but has to, has to back out of it again. You can always create a gap, like I used to do in Grand Prix too, but uh, yeah, that's a different story. He is just, yeah, he's so much struggling on, under the, the, yeah, but he's, he's a little bit closer now, but the, 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 it's, he's just going too fast on the straight. Straight is just a little bit too short. He has to hope for a mistake, Ooh, which is, is happening now. This is the moment, if any, that Martin Stevanko can make life miserable for Michele Di Alessandro. Michele does defend the middle of the track, Ooh. and Stevanko is back where he started. And he touched the grass a little bit there. Almost yeah. uh, thought he was going to miss his braking uh, altogether, but yeah, his tires are gone. He's, now. Yeah, he's uh, he's going to get attacked <laughs> for by Michi Hoyer as well. Oh, uh, please, can uh, I say something? Go on. Stay off the grass, Martin. Coming from Christy. <laughs> da, da, da. I thought it was funny. I think Stefanko yeah. is, is <laughs> lucky that he's Mitchie Hoyer's teammate because I think if it had been any other driver ahead of Hoyer just then, I reckon he'd have gone a lot more aggressive because mm. Stefanko got very twitchy yeah. in the car park. Yeah, I think his tires are, are, are gone, at least he's sliding all around yeah. and he should be uh, aiming for a pit stop now because he's, he's driving a little bit reckless. Mohamed Patel, he is driving on the main straight at the moment, finishing lap 13, going into 14. 
And just under a second, Martin Gosby is still following. Journey Simmons sits behind that. Becker steadily locked in his uh, slot in P4. And a little bit of a gap towards P5. Uh, gaps are a little bit spread out after P4. And, oh. uh, I've got some traffic news for you. Uh, Mohamed Patel at the moment is doing sort of 26 zeros. Stefanko, who's in traffic, he's doing, he's doing mid-27s, uh, lucky to get into the 26s. And wow. we know the guy's got pace, so it, with clean air, uh, it'd potentially go a lot quicker. But that's the, sort of the dirty air effect around this track. It can cost you a hell of a lot of lap time. Indeed. That's going to be a crucial phase for Stefanko and for, for a lot of these guys actually to make or break, to make any strategic uh, ways that they have figured before the race, make it work right now. But uh, as you see it often happen in racing, some guys get extremely lucky, sometimes you get extremely unlucky. And at this moment Martin uh, is just having a bad hand. I hear something. Camille, Camille. What's happening with Lisa? He is stationary with another car? Or is it the tires? Paresis himself. Paresis. Or is it also Parisis? Well, what happened? Holy moly! So he basically crashes into Parisis, who lost the car. Yeah, he, he just got collected. Let's see the replay. So Jim Parisis loses Ooh. the car. Yeah. Whoa. And then Lisa is unable in any circumstance whatsoever to avoid him. Complete racing incident here, but I'm sure Parisis must feel a little bit uh, sour for Lisboa. It's yeah, unfortunate. Sure. So, first pit stop of the race as well. Was that Risto Capet? Yeah, oh, no. Risto Capet oh, yeah, into the pits. Now. <laughs> Maybe he was hoping for the safety car and he thought, I'd better get in now. <laughs> no. That would be awesome though. Quick question: Would it be awesome, also for for your for you viewers at home, if we had safety cars uh, in, I don't know. in Formula Simulator? I reckon for some of the viewers, they might say yes. From the drivers, I mean, obviously they'll all have different views. Me personally, and Ron Squire driving mm. the safety car. <laughs> and how about that? Yep, yeah, no problem. I'm fine with that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, Golfi now six tenths shy of uh, Mohammed Patel. Those two are at it, and uh, you know, Simic is start to, starting to lose them out of sight. Um, could be a wise decision for Journey to just call it quits and go into the pits and try to undercut uh, undercut the, these guys because he is losing time lap by lap and he's getting further inside of Florian Becker. Ron Hister is well, uh, is liking that P3 uh, for the uh, for for uh, uh, for himself. Uh -huh. Still pushing, just set the fastest lap, 26-0. Yeah, great to see Patel having to work for his money. And great to see Gosby back again. Look at this, guys. Formula Sim Racing at its prime, lap 16. And we have the first two leaders of the race within 7 tenths of a second. It's the closest gap on track, and it's for the lead of this race. And for the bragging rights as well. I mean, for Brits, it's, you know, that's right, Dave. I mean... For the next two weeks, you know, one of these guys, among these guys, will become the loser, so. Yeah. Is it getting a little bit darker on my the track? I just uh, took a look at the radar, you can... Uh, uh -oh. What if it started raining? <laughs> oh, that would be so awesome. Yeah, the viewers can see the radar now as well. Now as well. You can see that little, little tiny green dot at the bottom, but that's not even close to Melbourne, so... Probably no rain incoming in the coming uh, minutes or hour. Well, that's better because you know, I mean, in Australia, rain falls double as hard since it's upside down. You know, so <laughs> it's really, really treacherous conditions there. Um, Patel is really having to start getting yeah. a little bit nervous, and if he's not, then he's a really cool kicker frog because he is, you know. He should, he should be constantly looking in his, in his rearview mirrors if he's not getting a, a red, white, black car uh, getting dived up into the inside. Four and a half tenths. Definitely getting closer now. But you should reckon that the tire degradation of Gosby is far more severe than it is for Mohamed Patel who's in clean air himself. Yeah, but you said it yourself also in the beginning of the race. Maybe Gosby is just holding up. Off a little bit more. Yeah. Saving tires. That should imply he's much faster. 
I think you can also this have, can't be. You Mohammed can, Bintelis so fast you already. You can aim your car set up as well for being in traffic, which uh, yeah. if you go that way with it, it means that when you are in traffic, you're not going to punish your tyres as much. But it comes well, Felix knows, but he is bound yeah. to confidenti uh, confidentiality <laughs> uh, agreements. Yeah, I, I'm not saying anything. Let's see about that last chicane, because ooh, that was a cut from Martin Gosby. Teammates of Mohamed Patel, lap 16, that's cut number one for Gosby. If you can't beat them on track, do it off the track. Felix is like, what the hell? <laughs> but I tell you what, I've been, uh, I've been riding on board with uh, Martin, Martin, on board Martin Stefanko's car, and he really is struggling and getting frustrated, I think, yeah. uh, behind Di Alessandro. He's closing up to him around a lot of the lap, but then as soon as you get to the fast left right chicane, he hasn't got the grip to be able to push through there. And because he can't do that, he's not close enough to attack down towards turn one. And it's just going to get worse for him because the Alessandro being on prime tyres is going to go longer into this race. And potentially yeah. when he pits, he's still going to be ahead of Stefanko. Yeah, he, he feels like he's stuck behind like Olivier Panis. You know, he Olivier Panis also won one, one race in his career. Michele won one. They bl both drove blue cars. So, yeah. But uh, on a serious aspect, you're, you're completely right. And Michele doesn't have to pit yet because his tyres are, are primes. So oh. Martin either has to go in and you know get into the uh, clear area clear space that that he can make uh, make some time back on track but then again yeah it's it's easier looked and uh, looked and done if he's committed to a one stop you better stick to the plan i guess right so Oh yeah, and uh, just to let you know as well, uh, Bree Wer, he's catching up to Becker, um, catching him quite quick as well, there's only sort of six tenths between them, but the oh, other thing God. to do with the uh, strategy as well is, these leaders, they need to come out ahead of Daniel Kiss, I've already mentioned that, yeah. but if they haven't got the fuel in their car to go another two to four laps, then, hang on, Patel Becker's and Gosby, in. what's yep. the gap, Patel and Gosby? Gosby's in. That's why Gosby's in, down. Becker is in. I saw it go down to like 0.05 and I'm like, hang on a minute, what's happened there? Yeah, Becker yeah. and Brewer also in. into the pits. Ooh, like pit stop happy hour it is. Yep, lap 19 of the race. Daniel Brewer isn't getting into the way of Gosby. And this thing now on P4, I'm going to make a screenshot and put it onto, her f onto the fridge. So, so what, so Gosby coming out in between the ACR drivers of uh, Stefanko and Hoyer. Hoyer's got the momentum now. Indeed he has, and the warmer tires, Gosby on the inside, Hoyer on the outside, it's going to be defending, but it should be Hoyer uh, who has to let Gosby go. But it's not making it easy. Oh no, and Hoyer just bit of wheel being banging rather there. aggressive here. Yeah. And taking Ooh. it, and ooh, taking it with all so many risks. And Martin Gosby has to let uh, Hoyer go for the time being. Not going to help him. Indeed so, indeed so. Becker now behind that P10. That was crucial, actually. That that could be the, the make or break moment for Gosby, because Mohamed Patel is actually, well, going right. faster still. Yep. That, that'll Easily. break him, that'll break him. It actually could benefit Becker and Brewer more, because they've come out into a clear bit of track. They've still got to catch the guys ahead, but they've got clear yeah, track for Becker. In. He's just losing Simmons time now. In. Yep. And will this mean... That Masciulli is gonna lead the race. Uh, it will, we have an Italian. There you go, Eros leading the Formula Sim Racing Grand Prix in Australia. He just made for one lap. Uh, Journey having a little bit problems during his pit stop, maybe? Uh, seems. Uh, no. It's something well, maybe reverse. It seems like a pretty long pit stop to me. It maybe. seems like he had to reverse, but I, it could be wrong. I don't know. Be. No, 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 it's okay. Oh, okay. Oh, Martin Gosby, Martin Gosby has gone off at turn one and two, and I think Simicic has just flown past him. Yes, he has. So, uh, might want to get a replay of that one. I didn't see exactly what happened. I just saw him coming back. Yeah, he just track. missed his braking spot. He went completely straight, and that led uh, uh, Simicic uh, uh, through. Simicic was coming out of the pit stop, uh, out of his pit box, and yeah, he, he just got a, got a better run. Martin didn't, you know, really know what, knew what to do, brake too late. Oh. And, and had to go through the grass in order to avoid any carnage. But it does mean that uh, yeah, he, 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 he is stuck. So that moment with Nietzsche Hoyer is, uh, ha has cost him severely. 
but obviously it's Michi's Hoyer. Even if it was a little bit uh, over aggressive, it's every right for Michi to dive in between because it's going for position, you know. Of course. And um, no doubt about it uh, that it's fierce racing and it's the, the way we should be racing. So Gosby now putting his teeth into his uh, uh, rim and just has to go for it. Erasmus Schulli not going into the pits. He's leading this, this race for more than one lap. Add a boy. And Daniel Kiss, who was 10th 10 laps ago, is now in P2 as well. Michele Di Alessandro finds himself onto P3. It's going to be interesting to see if Mohamed Patel has less problems overtaking Michele. Well, the story of the pit caught. stops there is the gap between Patel and Simicic was about, what, three, four seconds before the pit stops? It's now six. So Simicic lost a lot of time there. So maybe it was a long pit stop. Could it have been that Patel is short fueled for a? Is he going for a, uh, an option prime uh, prime? Maybe gone for a short less fuel load? Maybe. Or no, who knows? Journey does something total, totally crazy and goes for one stop. I don't know. Who knows? I mean, thirty-seven laps. Uh, 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 uh. I wouldn't want to try it. <laughs> the thing is, with the 37 laps, the tyres may just be able to do it, but it's those first 15 laps on what? You'd have to have about 140 kilos of fuel. Maybe not that much, maybe yeah. about 120, but it's a yeah, lot of fuel to carry. About 140. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Almost a full tank. Does these cars take uh, 148 at uh, the maximum or something? So, Gosby's struggling on these prime tyres now. He caught up to the back of Simoncic, and whereas previously behind Patel he didn't seem to struggle with dirty air, on these prime tyres behind Simoncic he's understeering all over the place. Yeah. So now the Italian Masuli into the pit lane. Daniel Kiss and D'Alessandro then are the last ones. To pit. Yep. Have 14 drivers left in competition. Quite a few incidents. Drivers uh, being called out by the wetness of the track. And the lag, of course. Oh, yep. very close between John Eric Saxon and Mashiuli as he comes out of the pits, and John Eric Saxon sneaks ahead of him. Uh, nice little move there, taking full advantage of uh, Mashiuli being slow on the pit exit, and Mashiuli on the option tyre. Yeah, Mashiuli not liking this. He would have liked to come out right in front of Saxon. He would have been in relative clear air as well. But yeah, the biggest loser, so to speak, from the pit stop uh, battle is uh, has to be Martin Gosby. And he's making a mistake yet again. He is out of the zone. Well, you say that. Somebody else that's out of the zone, I believe he's made a pit stop, uh, is Martin Stefanko, who's in 13th. I know you've mentioned that things are upside down in Australia, but that's a bit more ups upside down than I was expecting, that's for sure. Must have yeah. made a mistake somewhere. I mean, into the zone of Michi right Hoyer. Michi. Uh, he's going into the 26.9, so I think we can expect Michi in about a few laps time. I mean, if this is going to be... Uh, not the first 27, he started out doing 28s, 27s, then did only 26s. And now 26.1 again, almost personal best in this stint. It is personal best actually, so it is Michi Hoyer who is on full attack mode. Still has to make the pit stop work though, so he's going to fall back tremendously, but still. John Eric Saxon has dived into the pits, that will free up Mashiuli now. Two flag to flag drivers are closing in on Simoncic. It's epic. It's so epic. We didn't know what to say, Felix. Um, but yeah, you're right. I mean, Gosby is catching up to the back of Simicic now. It'd be interesting to see if he's he's got to grips with what his front end is going to do. It was through the fast light, left right chicane that I was riding on board with Gosby earlier, where he was suffering a lot of understeer. Now nah, he's yeah he's a little more dialed in with the level of grip that he's got in his car now, looking a bit more comfortable. But for Simicic and, Pat and uh, Gosby, I think they've effectively just handed Patel the win here. Well, you still got uh, 35 laps remaining, so. But they will happen. finish the race. 
on on this set of tires, Patel and no, the rest no, no, of the no, game? No, 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 I don't no, think so. No. I think they will go for either another prime stop or another option stop. But who knows? Uh, maybe God somebody knows, is gonna try it. I mean, Arrows went for a very long first stint. Who knows? Maybe he can do a 38 or 37 laps on uh, on a prime tire. Mm -hmm. And this Blair Disby onto the back of Michael Francesconi. Yeah, that's exactly what I was looking at and uh, seeing that oh, just up ahead, uh, Masciuli's come out of the pits. Uh, actually, Disley's got an opportunity This might be here. it, though. Francesconi is not really defending. Blair, with all your experience, come on, dive him. And he wanted to make a move in, but the other 50% uh, of the experience said, well, let's end this race still. Uh, we're looking strong for points. So let's see. Hoyer now, P3 under his name. Last lap, 26.6. So he lost half a second compared to the lap before when he did it his fastest. Kiss now still has to make that pit stop. Maybe he's going for a one stop. Still has, to, has a long way to go then. Well, all of the guys that started on primes have stopped now apart from Daniel Kiss. So they're obviously going for a two stop strategy. Uh, I mean, it'll be interesting to see how long Kiss, Kiss goes for. Okay, that answers Kiss that one then. Into the pit. See, Mm. Hoyer too. They yeah. may be able to do uh, option option from here. Yeah, probably. Uh, about uh, 17 laps each. Hoyer going to the super soft compound, which can only imply he's going for another stop yet. Yeah, sure. Two stopper for him. He's not going to do 33 laps on uh, option set. Is he going to be close on pit exit? No. Uh, he's out ahead of Stefanko, though. Yep. So. He's in front of his teammate. He wasn't so before the pit stop. Yeah, Stefanko was struggling, but indeed, uh, Hoyer doing a good job there with the overcut. Uh, Michele and Eros are uh, pretty uh, close behind uh, Daniel Kiss. Blair Disley having another look at uh, Francesconi, not quite making it work though, but you're right, that uh, that little battle you mentioned there, Felix, uh, Di Alessandro, Masciuli and Kiss, obviously Kiss having recently pitted, Kiss is in a perfect position there, comes out, he's got the clean air, I reckon he'll be able to pull away now. Yeah, I think so too. For the ACR guys though, they're catching up to the back of... Uh, the yeah. aforementioned cars. I think, well, yeah, Blair Disley and Francesconi, they're catching up to. But I don't... Yeah, but we've seen them stuck behind them for mm -hmm. 26 laps already, so I don't know if anything's actually going to happen there. Who knows? Let's go three wide after, after the, turn two. Why not? After the pits, Martin Gosby was basically having a, a gap of half a second between him and Patel, and it's now eight seconds because he was you know, pitted a little bit earlier and, and the circumstances. But pretty epic what, what one pit stop can do. He basically lost eight seconds. Yeah. Neat. Yeah, all with that Michi Hoyer moment. Uh, yeah. Of course, side by side, he's going to lose you a lot of Yeah, time. and then off the track again. And yeah. Simon Tietz, uh, yeah. Also his own blame a little bit. But yeah, sucks for him. Maybe engineers could have uh, tried to go in a lap earlier or a lap later. But that he yeah. didn't come out behind him, but of course it's... Yeah, I'm just gonna Close blame Cameron Roger. No way that Gosby, <laughs> his brilliance, can do this. No, I'm just uh, joking, Roger. But though, yeah, Simoncic, he will... I think he won't look oh, as much watch ahead. Stefanko, I was just watching on board the Blair This He goes around the outside. Wow, great stuff there. Oh, it's Hoyer, by the way, sorry. No, Hoyer... Just goes Hoyer around on the outside fire of here. But Disney has better coming back at him. Disney's coming back at him. Oh, Ooh, nearly contact between there. the two. I watch Stefanko. He's gonna try to into turn 13. Uh, he's way too fed up to wait another car. Oh, but Disney's breaking, breaking late. Disney's like, you know, 150 Grand Prix starts under his belt. So, yeah, one of the uh, drivers that has the most amount of starts in FSR, right up there with Patel. Just, uh, just a different league. He, he, he was winning races 10 years ago. But uh, yeah, times has, have changed. Yeah, definitely. 
Stefanko has to wait another try and he's gonna eat his gloves after the race. I don't know what he's gonna do, but he's certainly gonna be frustrated. No stress ball is safe in his uh, area. And now I'm curious what Michi will do with the level 2 end boss, Michael Francisconi. Maybe the same thing. He's close. <laughs> would be nice. Verstappen would be proud. <laughs> nah, I still feel back now. Gosby's catching Simoncic. He's catching him very quickly into the fast left right chicane, but nowhere to make a move there. I'll keep an eye on this and let you know if uh, anything transpires. Yeah. I think the grip of the ACR is much better than it is with the Netrex car. Um, obviously the tire compound is a little bit softer for Michi, but he's not having the exit here that he was hoping for. Otherwise he might have made a move right about the here. got past. Let's uh, really quickly take a look what uh, how he did that. Well, turn 11, did he go around the outside? He did actually. Around the outside of the fast chicane. That's uh, not bad at all. Blair of course uh, conceding there, but uh, yeah, great stuff for Stefanko. Yeah. Indeed so. So his P6, P7 start of this V is now being translated into P12. That's a little bit unfortunate there for yeah. him then. Becker now getting into grass with Martin Gosby. He's driving well, controlled, he's driving well, steady. Gosby, we have seen Gosby messing up from time to time. Yes, yeah, Gosby made a mistake. Um, uh, where was it? Turn one and two. Made a mistake, lost a little bit of time, lost him any opportunity of uh, getting close to Simicic. But the problem for Becker was that when Gosby's making a mistake, it's having a knock on effect to Becker. So Gosby makes a mistake, Becker reacts, and it's costing them both time. Well, let's see how this will develop and how this will turn out. Certainly uh, a big favor for Journey Simoncic right now. To see some people squabbling. What's this? Mashuli and uh, Michele Di Alessandro having a squabble? Yeah. Errol's letting Michele past again. Weird. Maybe some Italian shouting uh, going uh, back and forth in their team speak. Apa tu tu ti tu te. My Italian says. Uh, Family guy I love the way how Vettel speaks Italian though. I'm sure those Italians love it too. It's better than Steve McLaren talking with a Dutch accent. Uh, but anyway. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, Gosby and Becker, they're in an interesting situation, really. Gosby makes another mistake, though, and again, yeah. a knock-on effect for Becker. That's what I'm on about. I don't know if you saw that, but, yeah, Gosby makes a mistake, and Becker pays the price for it as well. And it's only margins of lap time at the moment, but it's all costing them, and now Simicic gets a little bit of a breather. And things are getting tight behind Michael Francisconi, because Hoyer is... Ooh, he's already onto the charge. He did it already... On the Cut outside back. here, and he's gonna yeah, try yeah, yeah, it yeah. here again, but that gap is gonna Ooh. disappear. Contact with the wall there. Yeah, they did have a little bit of contact there, but he managed to make the pass work. He doesn't have a top speed of the Netrex, Ooh. but it seems that he got the corner straight, it straight it out. So, oh, is Stefanko going off the track actually? In all that optimism, yeah, oh, and it's Hoyer into the top ten. Great job from him. Definitely, Mrs. Connie, you saw him. He wanted to. Maybe try something around the outside, but really there wasn't any room for that. No. Luckily they uh, could have You can it. always bait drivers into that line, you know, yeah. if you use your head a little bit. Brewer and Kiss possible. are quite close. Whether anything's going to come from it, I don't know. Brewer on the prime tyre, Kiss on the option tyre, and Kiss has been catching Brewer. Oh yeah, he's all mm. over him, he's all over the back of him. But we've said it all along, it's not an easy track to overtake and it's, it's about getting your traction zones right and the problem is the dirty air affects the front, you sort that I out and by the time Kiss you do that, I think that Kiss is going to make this, make this overtake work before the end of this lap. To be honest, I mean, he has softer compound tires, he, he, he's looking a little bit more sharp and it's Daniel Kiss, for crying out loud, I mean. Yeah, he's not shy of... Uh, Going for a move, is he? Or he just clipped yeah. the barrier, though. Yeah, that was a little bit uh, too much wall that, uh, <laughs> that he was fancying. 
Well, could it be that he got damage out of that, or wasn't it that, that big be. of a shunt? You mm -hmm. can give it a little touch and get away with it, but yeah, you catch it slightly wrong mm -hmm. and you're in trouble. But question for you, if you're Stefanko, you've just watched uh, Michi Hoya do a couple of fantastic overtakes and drive off into the distance. What's going through his mind at the moment is he's now got to try and get past Francesconi. Shooting himself. It's uh, difficult, you've got two, uh, two hands on the wheel, right? So, uh... Yep, only you can decide where your car goes unless lag's involved and then, uh, yeah, like James Sadler, you end it's up uh, outside the boundaries of the circuit. It's close though, exit of uh, the last corner. Nah, no, never mind. Maybe if you can do something into turn one, two. Uh, if we're back again. Just to find another space, like uh, Hoya did. Florian Beck has dropped off the back of uh, Martin Gosby now. Martin Stefanko almost lost the car at turn four. He's really uh, pushing is he those still, tires. Is he still driving like he stole it? Well, he uh, probably did, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I mean, he was driving very aggressively uh, in the opening stint and I'm frustrated being stuck behind. Um, Behind cars earlier on. Yeah. It seems that Martin Gosby has found himself a, a second life in his tires, second life in his stint, or something like that. Because it seems like he's catching up similar to uh, a bit more. Because if if that trend would have continued with uh, Florian, I would have always uh, made the call that you know let Becker through and let. Him have a go at Simon Sitch, you know? Well, I was going to mention that to you when I sort of mentioned that Gosby keeps making the odd mistake and it's affecting them both. And I don't know, as an engineer, it's not an easy decision to make. It's not easy to say, right, you pull over, let him go. But they could have potentially done it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm wondering if Becker now has sort of thought, you know what, I'm going to sit back a little bit, avoid this dirty air, look after my tyres, and push them later on. But what if you've gotten the, the question to, to leave your teammate on? You know, at this stage, I mean, he's in P3. Oh, yeah, I mean, if you're if you're Gosby in, in P3 and someone says, uh, let him through, let him have a go, you're going to be, no, 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 no. no, no I'm no, sure no. I'm sure he, he would say no. I would certainly not let anyone through. Would you, Felix? Mm, depends on how much money is involved. <laughs> you're, you're a brave guy, I know, but uh, I mean... I love your style. Nah. You, you, you're a nice guy, so you're like, okay, you know, I'll let him through. It but depends. See, it depends. I would. I would say I would. Depending on the strategy. If you're on different strategies, yeah, no problem, you go for him. Um, if you're on the same strategy, if the guy behind you has caught you up at a rapid rate of knots and he's your teammate, sometimes maybe you yourself have to go, you know what, I'm going to pull over and let yeah. him go and attack him. I'll look after my tyres for a bit and we'll see what happens. Maybe we both can benefit. Well, I think Gosby would be like for stopping in 2015. No. Like a big no! Yeah. No, but still, not yet. he no. is <laughs> fighting for P2 actually, and Becker is losing them a little bit out of sight if he continues on in this fashion. And Becker's, Becker's going to have to be careful as well because Brewer's not that far behind. Well, could be a leg spike, huh? <laughs> ah, that would be horrible. Having said that, Daniel Kish is getting stuck behind Brewer, and D'Alessandro is now closing the gap up to those two again. He sure is. Um, Michele and Daniel Kiss obviously know each other. Know each other very well indeed. Daniel Brewer in P5 though, they, he's still in this party. He was looking. He nearly hit the back. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I'm guessing he had the camera on him then. I mean, turn those corners, it's not a place you're really going to overtake unless you are already alongside on the exit of the previous corner, but. Yeah, he's going to have to be careful if he's going to have a look, but I think he's trying to get Simoncic out of position and get him looking in his mirrors, but Simoncic can be quite a cool customer at times. Yeah, he should be. No place for nice guys on the track. A little bit. But... Now, there's always a place for a honey badger, though. Daniel Kiss is also still trying to get past uh, Daniel Brewer, by the way. Uh, 
I mean, here, here's a little bit of a, a thought for you guys. Uh, obviously, refueling is uh, is available to to all of the drivers for this season. But do you think? Uh, I mean, Felix, you may be able to ask this a little bit uh, more with driving. No offense to yourself, Chris, but do you think with having refueling in the cars? it limits the opportunity of doing different strategies. So drivers, for example, like Becker, like Kish, that are a little bit stuck at the moment, they can't say, you know what, I'm going to jump in the pits now and switch tyres. They've got to they've got to carry additional fuel instead of carrying it from the start to the end. It changes the ma math a little bit. So you have an extra um, point to take into consideration where normally you would have a emptier tank and new fresh tyres, you would, you would gain weight actually now. But you would, you know, have better tires. So I think whether it it was a advantage to stop a lap earlier to undercut your uh, opponent, it might be the same case now with an overcut. That that would be the more favorable option because of the heavier weight. Yeah, but I mean, what I mean, for example, is let's say uh, Florian Becker at the moment. Let's say he was going to put on another set of prime tires in just off top of my head ten well, last time. He okay, can't no, really sort of go. It's... I could pit now, put those prime tires on because I'm not going to have to carry extra fuel, and I can pump in some faster lap times than these guys in clear air. So that kind of opportunity of going right, let's get out of this traffic, get the clean air, and go for it. Whereas now they do have to contemplate the the, the disadvantage of it. Yeah. Yeah, will, will it create more opportunities? I, I think not, then. <laughs> Certainly it's a different yeah, kind of racing and, and different kind of strategy. I like what I'm seeing, but, you know, it's, uh, it's a bit more uneven and you really have to think twice about what you're doing, you know? And that's the thing with Martin Gosby. He, he would have never lost sec six, seven seconds due to a pit stop or, or bad traffic last year if he would have uh, competed. Yeah, he would have just flown past with with a fresh of new uh, new tires, you know, and the same amount of fuel. But uh, yeah, it's it's just not the case now. The 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 biggest killer to to a good lap time is is weight. Yep. So Simmons sits now. That one shark that uh, um, was flag to flag racing. Uh, that one flag to flag racing car has suddenly, you know, beca uh, become two sharks and they're hungry sharks, podium hungry sharks and uh, of these three guys only two can land on the podium because Mohamed Patel isn't the type of driver who will have a DNF out of his own misery that will happen maybe once every 100 races So what we're seeing here is a really nice podium uh, 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 battle. Yeah, it's the also twenty-three laps long. The next pit stop phase is starting to come into sight now. And we've got uh, what is it? Just over twenty, twenty-two laps remaining. I mean, if somebody like Florian thinks, "Hell, I can go twenty laps on my next uh, option stint." Let's go in and see if I'm quicker than the guys now on my fresh options. Maybe I have a little bit more fuel. But if he thinks he can go quicker now already, maybe he can also try an undercut. Yeah, well, point of, uh, well pointed out there, Felix. Anything uh, is up for grabs still. That's the most important thing that we're not sitting here. Well, 10 seconds to P2, 10 to P3, 10 to P4. No, it's a fierce battle. And uh, apart from the, the battle for the lead, it's, you know, it stands. Yeah, I mean, Maybe. Actually, if you could ask any of the drivers, right, if you could Ooh, ask... Hoyer, Francisconi, what happens? Uh, oh, Stefanko's in the pits. That's what's happening. Ah, okay. So maybe so he's he the first. Uh, well, he needs. To, he's not run the prime tyre yet, so oh, sure. it'll be his prime tyre run now for, what, 21 laps. I'm sure Stefanko's mad. He expected more. Uh, he, oh, 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 that's still oh, happening. That was oh, close. Oh, 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 oh. I was about it's, to say, he'll be glad to get Risto any Capet more worse than pitted. this. Can it? You know? Well, he, he could have done. Had Risto Capit carried on a lap, then uh, Stefanko would have been dead last. Yeah. No. Uh, I tried to commentate a curse and back, but uh, yeah, let's see. Nah, but the, the the worst thing now is is, is definitely the Fran Lopez James Satter thingy with John Eric Saxon. 
And there's no thing John Eric Saxon could do about it as well. I'm gonna buy better internet, but he's already Scandinavian, so what you gonna do? I don't live in Scandinavia. Just move. Netherlands, great place. Hmm. Not Rotterdam at this point in time, probably. <laughs> now runs, runs away from Jeroen in the chat. <laughs> yeah, you you get some hate mail now in the Facebook. <laughs> he once asked me what uh, I told him I went to Rotterdam once, and he said, "What did you think?" I said, "Well, when I went there, it stunk. He didn't like me for a few days, but that was uh, in about 1998. So things may have changed." Hmm. Well, on, on on a different note, the thing with that Felix was talk talking about on football terms, they could have gone got the champion today, first time in 19 years. They did it, so what did the supporters do? They, they broke down their entire city. And Jerome Quakel is his fire supporter as well, so he might have been there, smacking a cop to the ground. I don't know. Not <laughs> I'd condone any of that kind of action anyway. Imagine a Formula Sim racing champion just, you know, being a hooligan in his spare time, right? What I would want to know is whether he's actually tried uh, chatting up and girl and going, I'm an FSR world champion, don't you know? And see if she's <laughs> impressed by it. I'll get a message for that one, I know for sure. But sorry, Jerome. Uh, go to your room. You know what that means. Uh, Gosby, still close to Simicic. Try and focus the uh, act, the, <laughs> the views back onto the track. Uh, Gosby, still close to Simicic. And second, third, fourth. When they pit, how they pit, what tires yeah. they go on. It's crucial. who blinks first and who is blinking first. Yeah. It's Becker. Oh, He's going oh, into the pits oh, like Michaela. you stated. I'm watching Michele almost get past Daniel Kish. Oh, here we go then. Kish has to go defensive. The Alessandro is gaining. There is a gap. He can do it. But, uh, the respect between him and Kish is humongous. Yep. Kish knew he wouldn't go into that uh, gap. Becker's gone for option tires. He's going to come out r not quite right behind, uh, let's see, Francesconi. No, he's, he's in relative clear. And he better be. So Is big he... risk for a Becker, pitting in lap, well, 38, 39 effect, yeah, I think. He's got quite a lot of laps to do on the uh, option tyre now, but if he can push now, get a couple of good laps out out of these tires i know these options when they're fresh even uh, when you have quite a lot of fuel they can be quicker than um martin gosby and simicic at the moment so even maybe with the heavier tank yeah even with the heavier tank well okay. that's saying that um chris you said a, a lap or so ago it can't get much worse for Mike stefanko can it well unfortunately yes it can stefanko we know pitted a lap or so ago disley has just pitted and has come out ahead of Stefanko. So Ooh. Stefanko pitted first and lost a load of time. Sad for him though. But Patel, uh, at least he's still on the track, not flying. Patel into the pit, leader of this race, will uh, temporarily leave that lead to his fellow competitors. He will do that with a cheeky grin on his face, knowing that it's going to be the last pit stop of the night. He's not going to be happy if he's going to do a Lewis Hamilton now. Because he is getting stuck behind Eros Mashudi. Yeah. So yeah, it won't yeah. be long before uh, Journey and uh, Martin will, will pit as well, won't well, will it now? So. No. You'd think yeah. not. The question is going to be yeah, if will they, they sort of yeah. prepared themselves to go longer. Um, and like I say, Stefanko pitted earlier, lost a load of time, and we saw that happen mm -hmm. earlier on, and it could happen now. So it be interesting to see how it does play out. Yeah. 26 1 was the time. Uh, last time round of Simoncic and Becker is not really known at yeah, 29.8 but that's not right due to the pitch stop. The time just now 29.3 that is a bit quicker than Simoncic last, last lap. Okay well that's good then so he's not losing time but Gosby's ahead of Simoncic, Gosby's ahead of Simoncic. What, what, what? what happened? Yeah holy moly when did we miss that? Someone blinked and Simoncic okay. was off track Let's uh, take a yeah. look. It's in the S's. Holy moly. Cosby. What are you doing there? And definitely good racing craft from Journey as well. Knowing that Cosby was passed. And it, it was his corner on that aspect. But wow. What a move. Around the outside. Wow, indeed. Side by side. No contact made. And indeed, great stuff there for Martin Cosby. Taking the position from Journey Simicic. And now, basically, in provisional second position. Yeah.
Yeah, so this was the spot he was hoping for. Becker now into free air as well. So he instantly gets back to P7 since a lot of guys, Brewer, Alessandro and Francesconi, yeah. both pitted, of all pitted. Becker last lap was half a second quicker than Gosby's. Yep. So this is really in, in the favor of, of Becker, that squabble uh, between uh, Simicic uh, also, and, and Gosby also gained him a second, a full second actually. So it seems like it's the right choice for the time being. Adding up uh, 22 seconds, yeah, he will come, in, uh, come out in front of Gosby and yep. Simicic. So it's gonna, know, don't, it's be don't grab the popcorn just yet because things are about to happen. Gonna be very close, but let's see what's gonna gonna happen. Gosby is uh, pushing very hard now. Yeah, indeed he is, and you instantly see a small gap being created, and he's going into, into the, the pit. pit. So his he first lap of actually having clear track yeah. ahead of him, he, he heads up with him going, I ain't got enough fuel, I've got a pit but now. What 1.4 seconds he, he had at least. Interesting to see now is where Becker is getting out. Gosby is stationary right now. Becker is coming up to the last corner. This is First left-hander, now the right-hander. Cosby is moving again. Oh. Oh. Ah, this oh. is Cosby's. This is Cosby's. Yeah, but Becker will have the momentum. No, no he's, he's right in front. Indeed. So it didn't really work mm. out for Florian Becker. But uh, yeah, well tried. Yeah. Interestingly though. Well, 1.4 seconds, yeah. So that, that means that Simic is most likely... Could stay ahead of them. Yeah, possibly. Uh. Yeah, it has to make it work though, 26.6 was his last lap and the lap before that 28.1 So that's where he lost tremendous amount of time uh, squabbling and fighting 26.0 for, for uh, Becker last lap, so it's more than half a tenth quicker Yeah, Simicic has to go into the pit I, sure. I, don't, I don't think he has, a other, he has a different mm -hmm. choice to make which is wiser in any aspect, even though he, he might lose uh, P2 or P3. He, yeah. He should go in. He, and he's, no, not. he's not going he's in. And out. I mean, I don't know anything, but didn't Simoncic have a long pit stop earlier on? True. True. But he can't. He, really he might he undercut with lower it. fuel then, right? That he has to stay stationary for like two seconds less. Uh, because he has less fuel to uh, to pick up. True, true. Daniel Kish into the pits. I don't know. It's <sighs> yeah. We just don't no, know. No, we don't know. We're gonna have to see. <laughs> um, okay. It's awesome. Where is Kish gonna come back out? Uh, let's see. Oh, in the sun. That's for sure. He's gonna oh, come oh. out right behind, or well, is it in between? Right behind. And it's gone. Wrecked. This is something he would not have favoured himself. He's then again, lost, he started like two times. Yeah. He's yeah. lost the yeah. position there to Daniel Brewer. Uh, Brewer pitted uh, a lap or two ago, uh, so Brewer's actually been able to gain through the pit stop phase. Yep. So 20.8 of 18.7 now the gap between Gosby and and Simonsic. So Journey only has one option, and that's to stay out as long as he can now. Back at 20.6, so that's shrinking as well. Interesting to see here, ladies and gentlemen. 16 laps to go, 15 and a half to be exact. Simicic is into the pit right now, so... Um, I, I think, don't know. I think he's going to come between Gosby and Becker. 20.5, it's going to be... Nah, going to be behind Becker, isn't he? Oh, well... Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. be so sure. Yep, Simicic is coming out behind Becker, it seems. Becker now on to oh, start no. finish. No, oh, gonna be in between. I'm talking yeah. rubbish. Yeah, he's gonna. You're, you're completely right. Nice. Care for the white line journey, and there he goes. This is absolutely fantastic. Journey is like this sh the cheese into the into the into the burger that is called flag to flag. Racing here. So can Florian Becker get past Simocic now? Simocic with a little bit, uh, well, pressure tires. Fuel levels should be around the same, of course, because they're both going to the end of the race. Uh, yeah. 
It's not like uh, Simicic is going to have less fuel on the car either. They'll both have enough fuel to get yeah. to the end of the race. But uh, I just want to touch on something that Chris said there. It was going on about burgers. So uh, any idea how many uh, burgers you'd need if you laid them sort of side by side next to each other to go all the way around a lap of the track? Have you um, tried? Less than one. <laughs> That's one big It's burger. like the age-old question, how, how long is a piece of string? <laughs> it's it's <laughs> indefinite. <laughs> If it was one, that would be an absolutely enormous burger. Uh, but no, it is, a, it is a few more than one, let's put it that way. But I'm sure. H have you actually done that? Like you've, you've flown to Melbourne, said hi to yep. Mr. O'Reilly? I popped down there this morning, yeah. Um, popped down to David O'Reilly, the only guy I, you, I know who says you, I'm you going on a game. Order 20,000 Big Macs. Yeah, you, you took Chris with you. Uh, got a lot of burgers. <laughs> yep. yeah, the other yeah, start, yeah, the other Chris. Like them burgers, yeah, started lining honest. them down. As I was putting them down, I turned around and Chris was eating them. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, it took more than I was expecting. But yeah, it would take 41,756 burgers to do a lap of the track. Right. Is, is that the ideal racing line or... An <laughs> That's a uh, racing line I'm going with there. Uh, okay. Without a spin with uh, <laughs> any corners. And again, I think theoretically you only need one. Not very optimistic there, are you, Chris? <laughs> no, so seriously, like scientifically, you can stretch it <laughs> almost <laughs> indefinitely. I, can't say I've ever tried I a mean, burger. I, I anyway. can say the F word and you can talk about burgers on the track. I'm sure Chris guys, won't, won't guys, mind. Watch Daniel Kiss. I yes, am watching Daniel watch Kiss. Daniel I was about Kiss. to say it, but Chris started talking about stretching burgers, and that's something new to me. But yeah, Kiss is uh, getting <laughs> ever so close to the back of the Alessandro. Now you got me wondering how many turtles would it have? No, no, I'm not even going there. <laughs> well, sorry. Well, that would depend on whether it's a normal turtle yeah. or, or a an alligator snapping ninja turtle. turtle from Louisiana. But uh, yeah, Michele Di Alessandro definitely not from uh, Louisiana. He's from some part of Italy where they, well, like fast racing, so to speak. Holy, holy, holy moly! Guys, uh, I he's think getting under pressure sorry. though. I think because Mohamed Patel has had a problem somewhere. The gap between him and yeah. Gosby was about eight seconds. It's down to five. He You're right. Off track in my console. So let's take a real last quick lap. Look. Last lap, he had a 28.7. So he lost two and a half seconds. What did he do? Uh, let's see. Turn three. Had an oversteering moment. Turn four. Uh, is this working? That's one lap ago, oh. I guess. It doesn't, uh, doesn't say anything for me, so I don't know. Oh, well, maybe uh, just talking about burgers got a little bit hungry and his uh, <laughs> concentration went a bit. But yeah, that'll give a little confidence to uh, Gosby, who's now got the gap down to under five seconds. He's going to uh, push like mad. I mean, Gosby's been in dirty air all the way through this race. He's not yeah. in dirty air anymore. Now's his opportunity to show what he's really got. Yeah, I think 13 laps, 4.7. Nine two seconds. That's not gonna gonna cut it, I suppose. And then he would still have to make uh, his way past. However, yeah, with another mistake like that with from Mohammed, it, it 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 could be the case. But uh, next to a perfect driver, Patel is. So I think this was the mistake that you know makes him uh, as perfect as anyone else. And now he's being uh, back to perfect uh, for the for the remainder of the race. Now you see it a lot. I I have seen it a lot firsthand actually with uh, with drivers like this who get to a level where their only capacity uh, that's spared is on on strategic insights, where they just focus on that and and the driving is just so second nature and they're just thinking about what should I do with the uh, with the next pit stop, who is where and how 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 much uh, should I drive here, how much can I give away. Yeah, I mean, racing can be brutal at times. I mean, I know Felix mentioned it in the uh, pro yeah. broadcast earlier on about uh, how his season went last year, and it was brutal for him. But people will have judged him on how that season went, on the results and things like that. And some people may see beyond the, the, to the data that says, like, DNFs or whatever, and look at what he's achieving now. And the way yeah. that Felix is driving now, he's now not focusing on, oh, I'm a, is someone going to crash into me? I'm a, his focus now is on, let's go faster. 
and it can change so much so if you've got someone like uh, patel for example who is comfortable with the car comfortable with the setups and the only thing they really have to think about like you said is strategy it's there's so much more mental capacity to work that out so if something happens he loses a front wing he's not he's not going to be put off by anything else he's he's got the focus there to be able to go right okay this is what i need to do bosh 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 done sort it out whereas somebody that's perhaps uh, having a season that's not going so well they'll get involved in an incident and fireworks will go off so yeah the the way a driver's season evolves can have a massive effect on how they perform on the track and also how people view them off the track well the gold rule in formula one is you're as good as your last race and i think that's very fair i'm saying nothing on that one hmm? i said i'm saying nothing on that one my last race didn't go well <laughs> um, <laughs> fair enough but uh, yeah gosby's closing that gap down 4.4 seconds not want to talk too much about Max, but same thing with Max last year. I mean, he won Spain, and one week later in Monaco, he went from a hero to a zero. Into the walls, yeah, three times. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so easily done, though, isn't it? Uh, okay, uh, battles at the moment. Gosby definitely closing in on Patel, but uh, Simicic is right there with him. A little further down, the Alessandro kiss. They're still close, and Brewer. Brewer well. Yeah, he's got to be careful as Brewer because uh, I think the Alessandro is not going to want to get held up for too long at all. And yeah. it's also very, very close between Disley and Stefanko by the looks of it. Yeah, and Journey almost scratching the wall there. Stefanko going, the going for the move around the outside into the fourth to last corner. Going for a bit of a switch back, trying to make these prime tyres work for him. He's going to have the inside line and that'll be moved done. Finally, finally. But is he going to come under pressure into the last couple of corners? Yeah, well. If Disney can get a good run out of this last corner, maybe he can do something. I don't know. Don't see it happening to be fair. Stefanko still out of the points. He will be uh, well, massively frustrated with himself. Yeah, you're not wrong there. I mean, obviously, uh, the good drivers out there, when a, a race goes bad, they'll do one of two things. They'll go, okay, let's forget it, we'll ignore that, move on. And others will sit there and analyse it and go, okay, what went wrong? What did I do? Let's make sure I don't do that again. And I think Stefanko is perhaps finding himself having done uh, one of those two things a couple of times this season. Uh, gap now up at the front under four seconds. And interestingly as well, I think Becker is uh, being caught here by uh, Brewer, who's bringing the Alessandro Kish uh, along for the ride as well. Yep. Actually will be last lap, two tenths quicker for Brewer. Now, I didn't see it, but it looks like Risto Kappa is uh, out of this race now. I'm not sure exactly when that was. I'll uh, try and find out for you. About six laps ago, I think. But, uh, yeah, okay. I don't know what happened. You could, like, take a look. So as we're getting into the later stages of this race, nine laps to go, eight and a half to be exact, the pressure is still on, and 3.6 being the gap between Patel and Gosby, I think Patel is just cruising this down, isn't he? Yeah, well, kind of cruising, maybe uh, not, but he's definitely... He's taking it home, push. so to speak. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I suppose, but nine laps is still, still a, you know, if he continues on in this fashion, he's definitely going to get catched by, uh, as well, Gosby S. Uh, Simmons is, so... Yeah. Well, we're coming into the later stages of, this, uh, stages of this race now, and I think we're also getting into the the stage of the race where people may start taking a little bit more risk. Uh, the likes of Di Alessandro, possibly Kiss, um, that if they can have a look at chucking their the nose somewhere it doesn't necessarily belong, they might try doing it. 
and hope that the car ahead uh, doesn't want to risk uh, getting any damage or losing any positions. Um, but yeah, Brewer really is uh, trying to close that gap to Becker, although well, I think it's opened up a tiny little bit. Three point two now. So, what are your expectations of this finale? Will we see a grand cherry on the cake? Who knows? Will be something. Will be something indeed. I mean, the race would be lived up to it towards that point. I mean, Patel has been into the clear after the first round of pit stops. Now it's looking a little bit to the worst for him, but still under under a well manageable manageable control of 3.1 seconds. But then again, he can't blink. He can't make a mistake like he did uh, five or ten laps earlier. So still everything on edge, and it's nice to see that the closest gap uh, on track is still one uh, uh, that's you know uh, basically a fight over the podium spots. Becker has definitely thrown in the towel, unfortunately for him. But uh, yeah, the podium uh, fight is still alive and kicking. It does look like Patel, I'm riding on board with it, it does look like he is just nursing this one home. He's yeah. not taking any risks and he doesn't need to. I mean, if he can nurse it and hold the gap at sort of 3.2 seconds, yeah, he'll be very, very happy. Yeah, he's a wise fox, is he? <laughs> Has seen some winters. He's like, uh, he you knows know, what he's doing, well winters, sure. yeah. See, that's where, I mean, for Gosby, it's a different scenario. I mean, he's pushing to try and catch up to Patel, but he's also pushing. Because if he doesn't, Simoncic is right behind him and he's going to mug him as soon as he can. So Gosby's in kind of a it's-all-risk situation. Uh, the only benefit for him is that he is closing the gap to Patel, but I think it might be uh, too little, too late, unfortunately. I think what's going to be more feisty is that battle uh, Brewer de Alessandro and Kish. All right, Richie Hoyer, there's Mashuli, also still uh, not uh, too far apart from each other, five laps remaining. Michi, Michi has got uh, the option tire. Will be uh, pretty much even, I think, at this stage of the race compared to the uh, prime tire of mm -hmm. uh, Mashuli. And this shows us where uh, Martin Stefanko could have been because he started right in front of Michi, didn't he? So, uh, yeah, but still Michi uh, should be happy with some points after having started P14 or P12. Something like that. Yeah, Alessandro was 13 at least. But yeah, a lot of DNFs as well. Especially for WC, eight DNFs. Like 33% uh, of the field. Michi sliding about now. Yeah. <laughs> Keeping it on track though, but he has got his teeth right in the front of his steering wheel. He's driving this uh, point scoring position home. But for his sake, he wants to make a P8. Eros Mashuli wants to make a P8 as well. So let's see. 2.8 seconds the gap between Patel and Gosby though. Ooh, and that, whilst Gosby is still on the fierce pressure. Of Journey Simoncic. What's your instinct telling you, Dave? Is this gonna have uh, end in tears? <laughs> yes, <laughs> it is. Um, oh yeah. It, I reckon it definitely is. Um, Brewer is now only two seconds behind Becker as well. You said Becker had thrown in the towel a couple of laps ago. He needs to pick it up again. Um, yeah. I just see drama. As well. he's, he's there as well. Yeah. He's. Kiss. Ooh. It's so close between Kiss, uh, D'Alessandro and Brewer that, yeah, that's where I think something's going to happen. But not only that, uh, Stefanko is catching up to Francesconi. And I think Disley's just made a bit of a mistake because he was closer to Stefanko than he is right now. But yeah, Francesconi looks like he's struggling on option ties at the moment, whereas Stefanko, he's absolutely pounding these primes into the uh, Melbourne tarmac. Yeah, exactly. Kiss is really close to the back of uh, D'Alessandro, but getting a little uh, twitchy 
on the exit of the corners he's now going to get the slipstream but uh, it's the fast left right that he's suffering with he just can't stay close enough taking a lot of curb on this occasion uh, may actually help him to get close to the final few corners but yeah it's not going to be enough he needs to be right alongside him if he can be uh, heading into that final corner but the yeah. gap's just opening up too much and in those S's, you really have to back off there, uh, haven't you? you? You really should lay off You the really there. should, yeah, because if you don't, you'll end up in the wall on the right-hand yeah. side. Um, yeah, but, but if, uh, if you're behind someone because of the dirty air, you, oh, yeah. you have to lift tremendously. Yeah, uh, like I say, unless you've set your car up to cope with that understeer and the dirty air, um, then yeah, you definitely got to be uh, lifting and potentially turning in a little bit earlier. Uh, to make sure that uh, you don't completely mess it up. We can see how much time that Kish has actually lost there. Um, and that all came from uh, the fast left-right chicane. So now he's going to try closing that gap up again. But it'll be the same problem when he gets uh, to those two corners again. We're only a couple of laps away from the end of this race though. And uh, Gosby still 2.7 behind the leader. Three and a half laps to go for Mohamed Patel to take this crown down. And make it four out of five. It's going to be uh, a hands down victory then. Yeah, unless he makes uh, a, well, a ridiculous mistake now. Curse him, Dave. Curse yeah. him. I don't want to curse him. I don't want to curse him. <laughs> well, I'll get blamed for it. Um, nah, that's okay. The curses do exist. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think he is looking comfortable. Stefanko has now caught up to the back of Francesconi. Um, but he may find he's in a situation where, once again, he's stuck. But... Uh, for Stefanko, if you can get the move done, it'll be a point on the board. Yeah. You uh, having any more info for us, Felix? No, I'm just at the moment watching Daniel Kiss still trying to uh, well, maybe do something to his sister teammate, Michaela Alessandro. But Michaela also still has that Invictus car of Daniel Brewer right in front yeah. of him. Can't That's getting much. crowded behind Becker. Yeah, it's getting crowded. Uh, his uh, rear view mirror might be a bit full. Stefanko may be in position to attack. He's got a good run at heading down towards turn one. Yeah, definitely. Slipstream available. Is he going to go to the outside? Yes, he is. Ooh, can't get past, though. Has he got the driver ahead out of line? No, he hits the anti-cut. That puts him all out of shape. And now he's trying to just rescue the car. Our epic stuff we're seeing here in the last stages of this tremendous race. We haven't seen so much fierce action but a lot of tension amongst these drivers but it's not over yet well, Stefanko is closing in again here in the first sector on uh, Francesconi I think he's going to have a look into the next chicane if he can get the power down which he yeah. can't every time he tries it the rear end's just stepping out on him but yeah. he is a lot quicker through this particular corner he's approaching now and also the fast left right chicane yeah. even though he's on the prime tyre but look how much steering correction he's having to do this is a tricky situation now he's catching him Outside. quick does he go for it or back out uh, he's he's no. just doubting to go somewhere he doesn't know what he wants to do but I think we're we're all three pretty certain that he's not gonna take uh, gonna be satisfied with P11. He's gonna go for for at least that that last point. But he has been fighting like no other in this race. He has been you know buggered down and there's this one point. Ooh, and he's sliding around uh, while whilst there's still one point for grabs, uh, for up for grabs for him. But he has to uh, get rid of the Netrix car. But it's been driven by Michael Francesconi, so as we all know, it's gonna be a hell of a job for him. Two laps to go for them. I mean, from uh, for the for the leaders of the race, it's just one and a half. This is epic. Okay, Daniel Kiss, D'Alessandro, Brewer are on the back of Florian Becker. Yeah, if he thought he was comfortable, he's not. He definitely is not. But I do still think it's going to be Stefanko where we may see some action. I've got a feeling he's either going to make an overtake or he's going to bin it. Yeah. That's how much, he's pitch, uh, how much he's pushing the car at the moment. Well, binning it or, or yeah. finishing 11th is probably less, the think. same for him. It seems that he, he does have the speed. He just needs the momentum out of a corner. He just needs one slip up from Michael in order to uh, make his move. But that's a little bit hard, uh, much asked uh, on this level of competition, obviously. And the last lap is running. 
Yeah, yeah we're on the last lap and Gosby's got the gap down to 1.7 seconds. He can see Patel, but I don't I don't think it's going to be anything he can do about it. Simic is no, right no there worries. as well. Daniel Brewer may have a little bit of a sneaky run on Florian Becker here. I don't think he's going to be able to go for the move. Yes, he does. He has a look up the inside. The door gets firmly slammed in his face, though. And uh, he's going to have to hold position for a moment. He's going to have to be careful because if he gets held up, the Alessandro is going to uh, show him how to reopen a closed door. Yeah, Michael, uh, Michele Di Alessandro is driving from P13 towards P6. Already taking home a big bag of points, but it could be a lot more with uh, the tension rising and building up right in front of him. But only half a lap for them to squabble it out and make the order as it is. Well, Patel, he's now only got three quarters to go and Gosby has really closed this gap up. Eight tenths in the one lap. Obviously, not a lot you can do about it now, but yeah, it means it's going to be a, a tight finish at the end here in Australia. Yeah, nice to see these three drivers captured in one frame entirely because here is the winner of the Formula Sim Racing 2017 Australian Grand Prix and it's Mohamed Patel followed by Martin Gosby on a really close second and Journey Simoncic after having won two weeks ago has to uh, uh, stay, well, has to be happy with P3. Becker behind that 16 seconds takes home P4 after a fierce battle between himself most, uh, mostly. Daniel Brewer P5, Michel Di Alessandro P6, Daniel Kiss P7, Marciuri P8, ninth is Michi Hoyer and his teammate is still stuck behind Michael Francesconi and that means it. that uh, Francesconi will take the last well, point well, here. Well, will it? Will it? He will. Oh, he will. Only he will. Oh. I tell you what, Stefanko, he had a look at chucking it up the inside into the penultimate corner yeah. and I think he My just realized... My driver of the day is Marcus yeah, Stefanko for trying. I mean, that's try hard with, with caps lock on right there. But great, great win from, from, from everyone in the podium. It was such an awesome race. Yeah, definitely a very, very nice race to commentate on. But Patel again, four out of five. You've said it already, Chris. Gonna be tough to beat in this championship now. Yeah, he has a, a fierce grip on that trophy already. Yep. When will we be back for the viewers at home? So at indeed, thanks that you uh, bring it up. We will take a look. So because we have a mystery month of a, not really the mystery month uh, this month in May, but definitely the racing month of the year where we obviously have the Indy 500, which has suddenly become, you know, interesting since Alonso is driving there. Um, and yeah, otherwise it's boring in my opinion. <laughs> but uh, nevertheless, um, we have Monaco, obviously we have uh, Barcelona this weekend. So yeah. it's going to be uh, some racing in May. In two in two weeks time we will at fsr will be back 19th of uh why does it say uh march but i think it's gonna be uh, uh yeah is it May? <laughs> we'll be back in in two weeks time at least so that's uh that's a good notice and the track will be uh, it will be at silverstone great britain 52 yeah. laps always uh, bring some great races yeah imagine that turn one can already see it ahead <laughs> turn one's all right at Silverstone. It's turn three and beyond that gets a little tricky at the start of the race. <laughs> it will be interesting to see uh, how uh, Pro Ace and uh, the WC drivers get on there. But yeah, I don't really think the story. Well, two stories for me from this race. <laughs> As you guys already mentioned, Patel is on course for the championship. There's no doubt about that. People are going to have to step up their game. But Gosby, that was not an easy race for him everything he had and it was close at the end unfortunately just not close enough yep indeed so i think it is about time to wrap it up for today um anything you guys would like to add chris Dave? uh no, that uh, I think we have seen a tremendous race here, and uh, really nice that we have seen uh, such a fierce battle for the for the podium amongst the podium finish, and we weren't, you know, already uh, able to see who who was clearly finishing uh, first, second, and third until the last lap. So that was awesome for me. Yeah, yeah I'll just say great stuff, really great stuff. Uh, we'll bring on the next one. Yeah, right. So uh, we hope to. I'll see you in about two weeks time at the Silverstone circuit. Until then, do take care and uh, see you later.